Hi guys. So welcome to this next part of the series on A to Z syndromes. We are on to letter E now. And uh, before we start, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Zainab Pora and I have done my MBBS and MD in Radiology from Ames New Delhi. And uh, let's begin with all the syndromes which are starting with the letter E. So the first thing we have here is LE1 Pewald syndrome. So this is a type of example of the cluster of syndromes that we call as SRP, which is short rib polydactyly syndromes. So this, you already have two features wherein you are going to have short ribs. So you can see in this clinical image of this child here that there is definitely narrowing of the thorax. So there's going to be short ribs here. And you can see in this clinical image of the hands that there is poly. Dactyly. So the two features are which are clinical, short ribs polydactyly, along with that you are going to have short stature and one very very important feature here is the presence of ectodermal dysplasia, alright. So all the structures that you know which are derived from the ectoderm like the skin, the nail, the hair are all going to have problems, alright, are all going to be dysplastic. So the next feature is ectodermal dysplasia and it is frequently associated with congenital heart defects out of which Atrial septal defect is the most important. So remember ASD. So this is LE1 3 wave, SRP, short stature, ectodermal dysplasia, congenital heart disease. Next, we have a syndrome which is a type of multisystemic disorder, a type of histiocytosis, but a non Langerhans histiocytosis that involves the elderly. So unlike our prototype LCH, which affects younger children more. This is something which is specifically seen in elderly, involves the long bones wherein you will see bone density being increased like you can see here patchy spherotic lesions. So first bony lesions, second you can have bilateral perirenal soft tissue and this appearance is called as hairy kidney. When you have soft tissue around, infiltrated soft tissue around the kidneys that is referred to as the hairy kidney sign. And the pituitary can be involved, the stalk can be involved, resulting in diabetes insipidus. So when you have such a cluster of symptoms, think of a very rare disease which is called as Ordine Chester disease, which is a type of non-Langerhans cell histiocytosis. Right? So this is Ordine Chester, a very rare disease involved in the elderly. Next, we have the empty cella, something which is very very important. So. Here I am showing you two MRIs, two T1 weighted sagittal images. The image labeled A is the normal image here. So you can see that this is the anterior pituitary, this is the posterior pituitary hotspot, this is the stalk, this is the optic chiasma that you are seeing here. On the other hand, look here, how the pituitary is flattened, it is completely flattened on the surface and you have herniation of CSF into the cella. So when you have a compressed pituitary or sometimes completely absent pituitary and all it's replaced by is CSF that is called as empty cellar syndrome. Very very important question for MCQ purpose if they tell you that there is a patient who's had postpartum hemorrhage a female after PPS is presenting with failure to lactate overall lethargy all the pituitary hormones are going down. Right? So when you have a pan hypopituitarism following PPH, what is the clinical syndrome you think of? So that is Sheehan syndrome wherein because of PPH, because of hypovolemia, the pituitary undergoes ischemic necrosis and that is why it can be completely atrophied or completely absent and you have CSF which comes and lives in the cella. Alright, so this is the empty cella syndrome. A lot of times it can also be a normal variant. And another thing I want you to remember, another association particularly important for exam, if they give you a young obese female with headaches, chronic headache and also you might also have risk factors like tetracycline intake or vitamin A or D toxicity. Think of what? With empty cella, think of pseudotumor cerebri. So it, Idiopathic intracranial hypertension or pseudotumor cerebri is the second thing I want you to remember, particularly for MCQ purpose for empty cella. Going ahead to Ekbom syndrome, it's a clinical syndrome called as restless leg syndrome, right? Wherein the patient in the sleep has this constant urge to move the limbs, very important. One, always rule out underlying iron deficiency anemia and uremia before you start treatment. What is the drug of choice is a frequent question. 
the drug of choice is ropinirole. All right. So before starting ropinirole, always always rule out iron deficiency anemia. That is frequently a question that is tested. Looking at the next one, which is the Evans syndrome. So Evans syndrome, I want you to remember three words. So first thing, the patients here are gonna have idiopathic thrombocytopenia or pura. So there's gonna be thrombocytopenia. The second thing is autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So RBCs are also gonna be low. And the third thing is its association with CLL. All right. So remember, Evans is a combination of ITP plus AIHA association with CLL. So these were all the syndromes that we wanted to do from E. A very quick recap of the must-know syndromes, starting with E, and the next one we'll be looking at is going to be F series. All right. So I'll see you all soon with the next short video. I hope this is useful. Please drop in your feedback. Thank you so much.